Oh my, Nigga oh my wanna God. see me fall. Focus on the door. So I'm just going to go over quickly how to get realistic shadows because it seems to come up a lot. I don't know why this comes up so much but I've looked up tutorials and I haven't found one that um, just goes through how to make a shadow like a realistic shadow. So I'm going to go over two. Uh, one on a flat surface like this um, with like a simple object like this like a basketball and then how to do a shadow on sort of a curved surface or um, more complex surface other than flat. And I'm also going to do these headphones as well. So place this on the floor and then you want to start making your shadow. So the first step is to just click with a black brush, um, a soft zero hardness, just so it gives this you know blurry circle. And then press Control T and stretch it like this. Um, depending on what angle your floor is at is depending on how tall you want this to be. Most of the times you can't even tell what angle the floor's at um, other than the, the actual shadows themselves. So yeah, you just want to have an idea of the shape of your room. So once you've stretched this brush down, you want to put it into place like this and hit enter. Now already, if you would just put this underneath, it looks decent like this, yeah? But it doesn't look perfect because what you want to do is press Control T, right click perspective and just drag this out to the same angle that your floor is. So say this floor is going sort of this way towards the camera then you want to just drag it out here if it's going steeper then just do that but just you know make sure it looks like it's on the floor and then tick and drag it underneath now because we've added perspective it's sort of stretched it out a bit so you may actually want to just stretch it inwards like this a bit and there you go you've pretty much done the shadow um, the only other thing I would say is on the actual layer of the product itself or the object you want to make a shadow at the very bottom like this just to make sure that the bottom of the object is the same darkness as the shadow that it hits because if you have it without you have a shadow and then you have this light you know this sharp light object on top of it whereas with a shadow maybe a bit strong you can also add multiple shadows to make it more realistic but you know just get that main darkness I'm just doing this really quickly something like that so this is before the shadow and then that's the main shadow and then the shadows on the object and that's pretty much the basics on how you get a shadow on a flat surface with a simple object now if we change the background to a curved surface like this it it's not that different the only thing that's different is you want to go to your main shadow here and press Control T right click warp and then just warp it to the shape to the curvature of the floor um, just with these edge points here you just want to drag them down like this till it gives this sort of arch warp like this and then sort of drag this one back up That looks really bad. I've probably warped it too much, but say if we just have say if we just have a plain background like this and we want to imply a curved surface without actually doing any, any other shadows in the backing or anything, uh, this would be a good way to do it just to warp the actual shadow. But uh, yeah, let's get onto the headphones. So with the headphones, it's sort of the same concept. Main thing I like to start off with is the same click with the black brush, Control T, stretch it down like this ish. Yep. Yeah perspective about there and then maybe make it shorter about there and make you want to make sure the bottom the most bottom part of the object touches the center of the shadow because that's where the darkest area is going to be so you want to just make sure you get that right there so we've got one shadow here and for the other shadow of the other headphone we're just going to copy and paste it here and drag it out like that and I think I'm just going to make it shorter and a bit thinner just because it's further away and there you have a pretty decent shadow that is all it is really for more complex objects wherever the object touched, touches the ground just place a shadow like this and then the last step is to place shadows on the actual product itself so yeah that's decent and again on a curved surface like this um, actually we'll just do it on a plain background if you have two different shadows or multiple shadows and you want to make it on a curved surface I would um, merge them as one layer 
and then do the warp separately like this. Um, I did it too much last time, so I just do it a bit more subtly like this. Just warp the edges down like that. Bring these back up to the object, tick it, and there you go. Before and after, just as a slight curved surface. And then as a last point, if you want to make it look like it's floating in the air, say we want to have it up like here, instead of having a sharp concentrated shadow like this, um, it's pretty much the same idea but you just want to, lastly after doing all the steps, go to filter, blur, Gaussian blur, and then just blur it out a little bit because it's never going to be as concentrated when it's coming from an object in the sky. And then probably lower the opacity as well a bit. So I've just changed the background colour with a hue and you can actually get some really cool advertisements with this really easily just put the product on here make some gradients in the background like this put it to a good color and there you go you've got an advertisement already so yeah hope this did help uh yeah that's all really peace